Hi and welcome to the third session in our series on living faith. We've looked at, this whole series anyway, looks at discipleship. But we started off looking at discipleship and then in our last session we looked at what it means to be disciples sort of in a household of faith. Now we're getting into the sort of nitty gritty of the discipleship process. Uh, we don't want to just talk about broadly what it is to be a disciple, broadly what it is to be in a household of faith. We really want to get down to how do we go through this process of, um, I guess, being saved and then growing up to what God has called us to be. Uh, I want to start the session, if I could, by talking a little bit about the first letter in our F-A-I-T-H triangle. Um, you know, if you've been at FGA for a while, I think you would have known that we uh, use the acronym F-A-I-T-H really to represent some of the core values of what FGA stands for. This acronym actually has been designed um, not just to mirror the five-fold ministry in Ephesians, but as you will see from this triangle, it's been designed to map or mirror how Jesus did discipleship. But it kind of starts bottom up. Uh, today we're looking at holy and set apart. And then we will go to teachable in discipleship, intimate relationally, active and personally involved, and then ultimately faithful to the mission. It begins kind of in the being era where we are holy and set apart, not because of something that we have done, but because of what God has done. And then it ends up all the way up to doing and how we're going to fulfill the great commission that we've been called to do. I think if you begin up the top, if you just go, you know what, you've got to be active, you've got to be personally involved, you've got to do all these things, you have to make disciples without first processing some of these things on the inside, it, our faith can be a little bit fake. And so what we're trying to do is start where Jesus started. You have to understand that when Jesus first called his disciples, he said, I have called you, not because you're so awesome. He picked tax collectors. He picked um, fishermen. He, picked, he didn't pick the elite or the educated or the religious, um, the uh, top echelons of religiosity. He, he was the one who made them holy and he called them apart. And in many senses, when we get saved, that's where we begin. We're holy and set apart. So what does that really mean? That word holy means sacred. That means its purposes are for God. You know, we are facing a little bit of a crisis of sacredness. Um, what kind of things are sacred nowadays? You know, we used to think, hey, um, sex was sacred, and you'd, you'd, you'd keep that all the way up to marriage. Uh, we used to think, Sacred meant um, religious symbols maybe were suddenly were sacred. But now religious symbols and uh, Jesus' name and being used as swear words and uh, in all kinds of images now. In fact, uh, if you think about it, boundaries are being blurred not just in religiously sacred things, but in all kinds of sacred things. It used to be that time at home was sacred with your family. Mealtime was something that you would protect. But now, devices have invaded all of our mealtimes and our homes. Um, we're seeing work blend into home. Home blend into work and all kinds of things are bleeding into each other. We're seeing a rise of tokenism. And what I mean by tokenism is that, um, you know, there's sort of a token commitment but it's not seen all the way through. A good, uh, I guess a good metaphor for, or a good template for holiness or sacredness is what God, um, is. if we could use as an example, uh, what God has set, set in His scripture. Uh, today you're gonna see us use, just as an example, uh, the Sabbath and the tithe. See, God had always intended for us to be holy and set apart, sacred, belonging to Him. And part of that meant then that we would then, instead of saying these big glorious statements like, I am 100% belonging to God, I am God's chosen people. What He meant was, hey, if you're going to make those statements, how about taking one seventh of your week, one day of your week and give that to me? I know you already say all of it's mine. And then we go, oh, one day? 
that's really hard to do. God, I've got other things I need to do on that one day Sunday. Or we would say, God, everything of mine is yours. And God would say, okay, well, great. Let's set aside the tithe, the first fruits, and that belongs to me. And then we go, oh, oh, the tithe, 10%? And if we are really honest, all of us have kind of grappled with what does it mean for our whole lives to be set apart for God. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 says, we are called with a holy calling. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You know, the word church in Greek is ecclesia. That's comprised of these two Greek words, ek, uh, which is out, and kaleo, which is call. And so we're called out. The church was always called out. That's what it meant to be the church. It, um, in a sense, we as a church, as disciples, in the first step of this process, have to understand we're not like everybody else. We've been called for a different purpose. We've been called out of this world. We've been called into the kingdom of God, not because of our own doing, but because God has called us. In Matthew 4, 18 to 22, Luke 5, 1 to 12, Mark 1, 6 to 20, you see all of these instances where Jesus calls his disciples and they're called out, come follow me. And they left their nets, they left their boats, they left their families and they followed after God. So today, I want us to think about how are we holy and set apart? What things are sacred? If we want to be disciples of Christ, there needs to be sacredness in our lives. And for this session, I think if we could just land on these things that God has set, the tithe and the Sabbath, as sort of um, representative, representative gestures or as a template for us saying to God, God, all of our life is set apart for you. So I hope you have a good discussion. Hope it doesn't get too controversial. Feel free to email or uh, throw up ideas with your home group leader. God bless.